Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. This is gonna be a good one. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to downgrade your iPhone 5 to iOS 6. Now that statement was actually a bit misleading because it's not quite that simple. You do need an iPhone 5 that's running iOS 7. This one happens to be on iOS 7.1.2, as you can see right there. However, that's gonna be the biggest hurdle. You do have to have an iPhone 5 on iOS 7. You're also gonna need this cable here, a Lightning 2 USB-A cable. It specifically has to be USB-A, it cannot be USB-C. The reason is because those cables do not let you get into DFU mode, only these ones. So if you've got a newer Mac, you gotta use this cable and you gotta use an adapter to get it connected. Luckily for us, we are using an older Mac. This is a 2012 15 inch MacBook Pro. It is my favorite model of all time, especially with this anti-glare display. You do need macOS Catalina. That is the oldest version of macOS that this program supports that we're gonna be using. And that program is called Legacy iOS Kit. You may be familiar with it, you might not be. If you don't have it downloaded, check out the link in the description. That's where you're gonna find it. Hats off to the team that has come up with this software and continue to update it regularly. It is very powerful unless you do a lot of cool things like what we're gonna be doing today. Now a brief overview of what we're doing. First of all, we have to get that software installed. Then we're gonna be saving the SHSH blobs of iOS 7 for the iPhone, and then we're gonna be downgrading to iOS 6. So buckle up, I'm gonna be going through this pretty quickly. If this is your first time using legacy iOS kit, you might have to spend some time learning it because the interface is a bit different than you might be used to. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Before we plug it in, we're actually gonna need a couple pieces of software. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and plug the iPhone into the Mac computer. All right, and it is connected. Now I am gonna switch over to the screen recording on the Mac so you guys can see the screen a little better. I might be switching back and forth. We'll see how adventurous I'm feeling in Final Cut Pro when I edit this later. Here we are on the desktop, and once you have legacy iOS kit downloaded, I like to drag it to the desktop here so we can access it a bit easier. Now you're gonna need a terminal window like this, and you're gonna need the legacy iOS kit window open. This restore.sh file is the one we're gonna be working with consistently here. So take that, drag it into terminal, click so that this is the window selected. You'll know it's selected because these will have color, and then click enter. If this is your first time running the program, you're gonna to have to download and install some things and that could take some time depending on your internet speed and how fast your computer is. I should also mention, I don't think this works on Windows, so you gotta have a Mac. So if you got a Windows, I don't know how to help you with that. Okay, now that we have our iPhone shown up in Legacy iOS Kit, we need a couple pieces of information. First of all, we need the iOS version. So for me, 7.1.2, I mean, we already knew that because you could see it on the phone itself. but. Crucially, we also need the version of the specific phone we have. So there are two versions. There's global, which is what I have, and there's GSM. And you have to keep in mind which version you have. So for me, it's global. If yours is GSM, remember that. Now we're gonna head over to Safari. I will leave this linked down in the description. It's a website here called IPSW.me. You're gonna click iPhone and scroll down until you see the iPhone 5. Now there's two models here, Global and GSM. Make sure you select the one that you have. In my case, that's Global. Once we're in here, we're gonna have to make two downloads. You're gonna download the version that your iPhone is currently on. So for me, that is 7.1.2. We'll click that and we'll click Download. That should go into your Downloads folder. From there, drag it onto the desktop. After that, you're gonna download the version of iOS you want your iPhone to end up on. So for me, I picked 6.0 because I'm feeling a little bit adventurous today and it'd be cool to have an iPhone 5 on its very first version of iOS. So you'll select the version of iOS 6 you want and then download it. Then we're done with Safari, we can exit out of that. Once you've got both your IPSW files on the desktop, we can proceed. Remember the first step is gonna be saving our SH blobs. I did make a separate video on that before I realized we were gonna be doing it here. So I'm just gonna run through that really quickly. If you want a more detailed explanation, go ahead and watch that video. I'll leave it linked down below as well. So inside a legacy iOS kit, we're gonna navigate down to save SH blobs, select enter. We're gonna select the onboard blobs. We're gonna select IPSW. We're going to pick the version our iPhone currently has. So that for me is 7.1.2. We're gonna select that and then the computer is gonna begin its work. From there, we're gonna select save onboard blobs. It's asking us which version we want. Most of you guys will be using Pwn DFU. If for some reason your phone is jailbroken, then select KDFU, but for most of us, Pwn DFU is fine. Select that, select yes. The iPhone should go into recovery mode. 
Once it's there, we'll be prompted to enter DFU mode. We'll select yes, and we will follow the on-screen prompts of holding the home and power button down for eight seconds, and then letting go of the power button and continuing to hold the home button for an additional eight more seconds. If your phone lights up and the screen comes on, you did it wrong, you're gonna have to start over. If your phone stays dark and you see this window here on the computer, go ahead and select one of these two options. Now they both kind of do the same thing. There's really just two versions in case for some reason the first one does not work for you, you can try another. I'm gonna select this top one here. We're gonna click enter and the software is going to begin saving those blobs. There's a chance it's not gonna work and if it doesn't, you'll have to run through those steps that I just did over and over until it works. All right, so mine did fail, that's fine, it has failed before. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that restore.sh file up there again and go through these steps just like I did before, this time a little bit quicker because I'm not going to do a voiceover for the entire thing. If yours did work, then you can go ahead and wait for me to catch up to you. All right, third time's a charm, it did work and my blobs were saved. They will be inside this folder here called saved and then SHSH, and then here is the blobs. I'll go ahead and drag that to the desktop as well for ease of access. Then we're gonna wait for the iPhone to reboot and we can proceed with the downgrade. So that first step is out of the way. We are about halfway there. All right, once the iPhone has turned back on and is still connected to the computer, we are gonna proceed with the downgrade. So we're gonna drag that file back in, click enter, and this time we're gonna do restore slash downgrade. From there, we're gonna go down to the third option that says other powder snow 7.x blobs, click enter. Here we're gonna select the target IPSW. This is the version that we want the iPhone to end up on. So for me, that's gonna be the 6.0, select that. And then we're gonna select the base version. So that is gonna be the version of iOS that we are currently on. That's 7.1.2 in my case. I will select that. And now we're gonna select the SHSH. So that is going to be what we just saved on the iPhone. So select that, and then we're gonna pick the blobs. It's gonna be the .SHSH file, and we will select that as well. Now we're ready. We're gonna go down and click Start Restore. It's asking us if we want the iPhone to be jailbroken. Sure, why not? We'll select yes to that. If for some reason you don't, you can navigate down and select no. Now it's asking if your computer has more than eight gigabytes of RAM. Mine does, I've got 16. So if you do select yes, if you've got eight or less, select no. I don't know if that actually makes a big difference or not. Now it's asking if we want verbose boot. I'm gonna say no. If you wanna see a line of text of what your iPhone's doing when it boots, then select yes. But I just want the clean Apple logo, so I will say no. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back here to the iPhone view. I believe we are done with uh, at least reading what's on the screen. Keep in mind the iPhone is still plugged in. Legacy iOS kit is chugging along there, figuring out what it needs to do to restore this iPhone to iOS 6.0. That's the version I specified. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. Just let it sit and let it do its thing. This could take a while. I think it's a lot faster if you have a newer Apple Silicon Mac but in my case, this third gen Intel i7 is taking its sweet time. So we're just gonna let this thing chill and we'll be back once it finishes. All right, now the software is asking us to go back into DFU mode. So I'm gonna select the first option, Pwn DFU. I'm gonna select yes to get it to recovery mode. And we should see that pop up here any moment. All right, now that we're in recovery mode, we're gonna select yes again and then we're gonna follow the prompts to go into DFU mode. And then we're gonna select that first option again, clicking return. This should be the restore step, I hope. It's looking like it might fail again. This is what it displayed last time and it kinda of got stuck on the find serial number step. I will zoom in so you guys can see that. It's just gonna say find serial number, or found serial number over and over again and then it's gonna eventually fail. So once that happens, I'm gonna to have to run through the steps again. Luckily, we don't have to save the blobs again. We've already got all that, so just go through the steps of restoring. I know it's a bit of a pain. All right, so it says it failed, so I'm gonna go ahead and do those steps again. All right, and as you can see here, we've got the old Apple logo as this phone begins to restore iOS 6. 
that is a great sign. So we're gonna put this down and I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part of the video. It should take a few minutes for the Mac to get iOS 6 installed. Once it does, we'll see what we've got. All right, and here we are. iOS 6 has been installed. We can go ahead and unplug. We are done with the Mac, and here we go. Go ahead and fly through the setup here. Once we get to the home screen, I'll show you guys what we've got. Okay, here we go. iOS 6 on the iPhone 5. This is an untethered downgrade, and to show you guys that, I will power it off here in just a moment so you can see Heading into settings general and about 6.0. And uh, once again, this is a 32 gig iPhone. Scrolling down here to the bottom, modem firmware says it's at 11.80.00. I cannot confirm if that is the old or the new version, but according to everything I've read, this does use the most up-to-date modem firmware. And that should be the only difference that this iPhone has from stock iOS 6. Let me go ahead and show you guys that this is untethered, so we're gonna power off. And as soon as we can, we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on. So there is a white screen. That's actually not exactly what I was expecting. White screen with a blink and another white screen. And there's the Apple logo. So perhaps not quite as smooth as stock iOS 6 loading, but uh, it is untethered as you can see. It is booting into iOS 6 again. We'll go ahead and wait to reach that home screen. And there we go, iOS 6. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.